How's it going everyone? Uh, my name is Isaiah. I'm from Nerd for Hire. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to do a uh, HDMI port replacement. I've had quite a few people reach out and ask me personally um, on the Discord that I'm in. Um, there's a few tutorials out there, uh, but nothing really goes super deep into details as far as tools required um, and, and technique. So um, I've got a few camera different angles set up. Uh, you're going to see a microscope view. You're going to see me as you are right now. Um, and then also I have another view that's kind of focused more on um, hand motions, what, you know, what I'm doing as I move around my workbench. Um, so you guys can see everything from there. Uh, a few things that I'm going to go over first are tools. Um, there's a lot of tools required for this sort of work. It's nothing that you can just get uh, cheapo stuff and, and, and replace. So if you don't plan on investing in the tools and time it takes to do this sort of work, I definitely recommend reaching out to a professional that can do it. Um, I 100% take mail-ins um, if you're not local to my area or um there is like i mentioned there's a discord that i'm in i'm gonna have every link for that below um where you can reach out to professionals in your area it's global worldwide there's there's people all over the place that do these kinds of repairs um so we'll get into it <laughs> um as far as the tools go there's there's a lot on my bench here and you'll see it as i as i progress through the video um we'll start with from my left and work my way to the right side. So I have a SMD workstation. I start off with a cheapo one from Amazon. I spent like $50 on it. Um, and that lasted me a while. The only reason why I upgraded uh, is just because I need something more efficient. As I grew, my business grew, I just needed more um, more professional grade tools to get, to get through everything. Um, so I've got an SMD rework station, like I said, uh, the brand is an Atten ST862D, and I'll show a picture of that up on the, on the screen, uh, as well as the model name. Like I said, links are going to be in the description below box for everything that's here. Um, of course, I've got a few different spools of, of solder. Uh, I've got a 37, yeah, 3763 mixture um, of solder. Uh, it's rose rosin core i think it's how it's pronounced rosin core so there's flux inside of it um, but you're also going to need just regular flux as well um, that helps out a lot this is the amtec nc559 v2 i usually get mine from the rossman uh, repair website however i checked yesterday um, that would be august 19th 2022 and he was out of stock he didn't have any in stock so um i'll have the northridge fix website they also sell um give me one second put my phone on silent they also put um or they they have genuine amtech flux in stock don't buy any off of ebay or amazon those are ripoffs they're, they're cheap flux they're branded as amtech um the reason why the amtech market is so difficult is because they make it really hard for consumers to buy their product. I don't know why they do, but they do. Um, Rossman goes into it a lot about uh, PO, like purchase orders and fax over stuff. And it's just a hassle to try and get a stock and there's a minimum purchase order for it. So um, their flux is the best in the market, but um, it's a hassle to try and buy some. Um, so I'll, I'll link Northridge Fix website. Uh, I definitely trust them with my business so uh, you should too um continue moving on i have a microscope you're gonna need one but hands down this is not a project that you can do without a microscope any sort of smd work you're gonna need a microscope for um you can do what i did i start off and got a cheap one um as with all my tools i bought cheap first just to make sure i was ready and, and willing to to take this journey um but i got a cheap microscope it was like fifty dollars on amazon um i got a boom um arm mic just like this one that's got my microphone on it um and i attached the microphone or the microscope to that so i could articulate and move my scope around to where i need it to be um eventually i upgraded to an am scope uh, i forget the model i'll have that linked as well um an am, AM scope stereo uh binocular microscope <laughs> it's a mouthful um that 
was night and day difference i did i did amazing work with that um the only reason why i don't have it anymore is because i wanted something that has an hdmi output so i could hook it into a capture card uh, so i can live stream and bring you guys uh, the tutorials like this um, and the one i don't know the model actually i got it off trade from a, a buddy that was local um i gave him my my stereo scope and i i nabbed his uh hdmi scope they're roughly the same price um like between two and three hundred dollars for for them uh you'll also want some sort of fume extractor especially if you're going to be doing this regularly um i've yet to upgrade to one i've got just this cheapo one that's basically a fan with a carbon filter that definitely needs the filter replaced um it's better than nothing but breathing in solder fumes and, and flux fumes and all that stuff is really bad for your lungs uh, over time it will definitely definitely uh, have detrimental effects um continuing on my soldering iron um i've got a hako fx 951 uh, i started off with a tenma i forget what it was i'm not even gonna link that because it was such garbage um i eventually upgraded to a, a kesker kesker sure i pronounced that wrong t12 um i definitely recommend it uh the output was a bit rough i had a few issues with it um but you can calibrate all the tips and once the tips are all calibrated and everything works perfectly fine i had bought off-brand um tips at first and i'm sure that's what most of my issue was um, so the kesker works great that's a nice mid-range budget i would say for hobbyists or beginner professionals um but definitely the, the hako fx is an amazing uh soldering iron i really enjoy it and then of course there's also a brass ball that it came with with the station um that you use that to clean your your iron tips with um so i think that's it for the tools um other than just like i said there's flux um and then i've got some isopropyl alcohol 99 percent uh medical grade isopropyl alcohol in this little uh, tube here this little dispenser it's got a nozzle very easy to help um just squirt a little on the board and use a brush to clean it speaking of brushes i've got these you pick up a brush kit on amazon for like 10 bucks uh, and then tweezers i've got some angled tweezers here these are amazing uh can't do this work without it and that's uh oh wait hold on one more thing i'm sorry the solder braid I almost forgot that it was sitting out of out of focus there solder braid you're gonna need that as well all right so now we are going to go ahead and get my microphone out of my face here okay all right, so here we are under the board view here. See that? Get that into view. So a few disclaimers. Um, one, this board is dead. Um, I pulled it off a dead system. This is just for educational purposes. Um, I had an HDMI port last week that I probably should have filmed this on um, for customer, but I didn't. Um, secondly, this is an Xbox One board, um, but this method applies for all HDMI systems that have uh, SMD connections. Um, I've had, I've done a PS3 before that had through-hole components. That one wasn't fun, um, just because it, it was a lot harder to get cleaned up. But anyways, um, so this will work for Xbox One, One S, One X, um, PS4 that whole line of ps4s ps5s and then the xbox series family as well for systems um same method it applies for everything uh so we'll go ahead and get started so you're looking at your hdmi port here and we're going to get my iron which is set to uh i haven't changed it but on hako it's preset to be in fahrenheit not celsius which is kind of annoying because everything else in this trade is all in Celsius um, but it's approximately 375 degrees Celsius uh, which is about 710 degrees Fahrenheit <clears throat> so I'm just gonna get my iron I'll put a little solder on there and just stab it with the brass ball um, just to clean the tip off so it's nice and, and shiny there as you can see and then we'll get some more solder on there. We're just gonna drag this solder across the pins here. Uh, 
And the reason for doing this is because um, the solder that comes from the factory is got a higher melting point than the hobbyist, in parentheses, hobbyist and enthusiast level solder that you just buy off of Amazon. <clears throat> so this will help lower the melting temperature so you're not subjecting the board to a lot of heat. Um, so there we go, we've got a nice blob across there. Uh, and then we're gonna flip the board over and we're going to look at the underside. These are the anchor holes there, the connectors. Get those into focus, so there's four of them. Uh, you're just looking at the two here. I'm gonna dab a little flux down on both both sides there. And you'll notice throughout this tutorial, we use a lot of flux. Um, flux helps with the flow of solder. In case you didn't know, now you know. Uh, helps with the flow of solder, so it's a lot easier to work with. In fact, if you don't use flux, it's pretty much going to be impossible to do this. So, put your iron there. We're just mixing flux again, or mixing solder just like before. And it'll start to take eventually. Might have to bump the heat up on my iron here. I probably will. There we go. Would also help if I used a bigger tip. That would help uh, disperse the heat a little bit more. So I'm going to do that right quick. Good thing about this iron, you can take the tips off pretty easily. Don't do it how I just did it. Probably damages. Uh, got that nice little silicone pad. And we're just going to switch to this knife tip here. Make sure it's in there good. Very good. Now we've got this bigger tip here. That will help a lot. It's still heating up. There we go. Try and keep it into focus. And you see how shiny that is now? That's looking pretty good. Yeah, so that's nice and mixed. You can tell because everything just melts as soon as you put your iron to it. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Okay. And you can see the difference between the two. That was dull over there. That's got the factory solder on there. Crap. Crap stuff. Move on. And this leg has no through hole leg. I don't know why, but they do it that way. Just a Microsoft thing, I guess. Make sure everything is nice and load there you see I got some on the ground plane that's not a huge deal not the end of the world we're all good there in fact whenever you do yours you're probably not going to get it on the ground plane because you're mostly going to be doing this port um, which I already did earlier just as a Test to make sure I'm good. <laughs> I did a trial run yesterday. <clears throat> this is actually my second time recording this video. Alright. 
So you can see the flux is kind of burnt. It's black there. So I'm just going to squirt down a little alcohol, brush it. Move on. There you go. It looks pretty good. A little goop there. You can just scrape it off with your tweezers. All right, cool. So now we've got solder on everything there. And we're going to do a quick so jump. Readjust it a little bit here. Um, we're going to fire up the hot air station. And we're going to remove the port here. Um, so I've got the board. It's just hanging off my desk a little bit. So the port can fall out. Um, I'm going to grab it with my tweezers and I'm going to heat it up from above. Um, the point being that, I'll take this a little bit here. So we're going to heat it from above here. Uh, we're going to focus on the anchor points and then also just right back here. Because this is right, right back here is where, where those pins are. We're trying to heat all that up. So as we're just heating it up, we're just going to hold it with our tweezers here. Um, we're not going to, we're not going to pull, we're not going to yank it. We're not going to pull back on us. We're not going to pull down. Um, because chances are, if you do that too early, you're going to tear a pad up. Tearing a pad up is a nightmare, um, especially for a beginner, to try and repair. Um, so we're going to try to avoid that at all costs. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my, iron, my hot air station. I'm going to toss a little bit of flux down. I know I cleaned, cleaned it up, but a lot easier. This is the port that we're removing. Second one here. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn my hydro station on. I'm at 400 degrees Celsius at 90% airflow. Okay. I'm also going to turn on my fume extractor. I forgot about that. All right. So I'm not putting the nozzle down on the board okay don't do that how you destroy it so i'm just kind of floating above maybe a few centimeters a few millimeters whatever i don't know quarter inch half inch okay and as i'm starting because my station's really effective this solder on the legs are pretty much already melted um and this board is going to transfer that heat that heat's going to dissipate just throughout the board, um, but really just focusing on this area here, gonna heat it up. And like I said, I'm, I'm just gonna support this port with my tweezers, and I'm not gonna pull, I might give it a gentle wiggle, very gentle, though, not a whole lot. And just right there, as you saw, it broke free. So I'm, I'm holding it still, I'm just kinda just seeing where it's at. It's not quite, not quite out yet. And just like that, it's gone. Grab that port off the floor. It is scorching hot using my tweezers. Okay, so now I'm going to lift up a little bit and angle back down. And you can see on the board there are the anchor points, and those are full of solder still. We're gonna get those cleaned out. I'm going to grab my solder braid here that's on the on the spool. I'm just gonna snip a little off of my cutters. Look back down on this port. Raise you up just a tad because I'm really close for my camera and I don't want my well, let's focus up on that. There we go. I'm gonna dump a little flux down on there and turn my station back on. I'm gonna grab both my soldering iron and a hider gun. I'm gonna turn that back up. I'm gonna drop the airspeed down. I don't need it up that high anymore. Uh, so I'm gonna keep it at 400 degrees, but I'm doing half, half the speed. 50%. Um, 
going to set your solder wick down. And I'll do two different angles on this. So on this side, I'm just going to show you the bird's eye view. You're going to put your station underneath and your iron above. That's going to soak up all the solder in that holes in the in the holes there, just like so. Okay. Let's ease down for a sec so I can readjust. And we're going to come back and do the exact same thing right over here. So I can get the camera to focus on the board and not the stuff behind it. Come on, buddy. <laughs> board is a little, a little hot still. Okay. So as you can see, the hot air station running. Iron going. All right. That's good there. Got my soldering wick actually soldered to the ground plane. Lift up with your tweezers. Iron. And you are good. So those holes are completely bleeding through. As you can see, light shining through. They are solid there. Let me go ahead and readjust my cameras again. All right, so here we are. We're looking back underneath the board. Uh, I just cleaned it up. I scrubbed it up a little bit. I had to readjust my camera, so I cut that part out. But all I did, as you saw before, I just... Threw a little of the uh, isopropyl alcohol down, scrubbed it with my brush, grabbed my paper towel, shop towel, sorry, shop towel, and gave it a good wipe down there. So it's nice and nice and clean board. No one's ever going to see these, but um, unless if it's another repair tech or just a curious customer wanting to see what work it is. Um, but we have a nice clean workspace to go off of. Now there is a decent amount of solder here, um, still on the pads. Not every pad has solder on it. Uh, you can tell because these look bumpy, right? There's bumps there, but these are kind of flat. There's a bump there. And you can feel it as you scrape your um, tweezers across. You can feel it bumpy there, but um, you can just add solder on it or just add solder straight to your existing um, solder or you can clean it up and uh, sorry I was changing the tips of my iron uh, you can clean it up and add new solder so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little flux down on the board and I'm just gonna add new solder to it without cleaning it up because it's it's good looking enough right now anyways don't need to stress it too much wait for my iron to heat up there all right <clears throat> table's twisted so just gonna get the iron add a little solder to it And just kind of going in this circular motion here. Just dragging solder across. Getting good amounts here. And I might need to turn the temperature up a little bit. Just because this board's pretty thick. So it's kind of struggling. So that's what I'm going to do. Go ahead and bump it up. Got it up to about 400 degrees Celsius now. There we go. That's a lot. That's a lot smoother. If you get some bridges, it's not the end of the world. You can work them out. Just like that. See? Just clean the tip of your 
your uh, iron there. Let me back this camera up a little bit so you can see. You can see more. There we go. I burned my camera. Um, just dipping it in the the brass ball there. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty good. So once again, I'm just gonna clean up this flux because it's a little used, a little tacky. Cleaning and going. And it's looking good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the port that I took off um, just right back on. And I'm probably going to edit this part out because there's some solder on the anchor leg still. That's going to make it kind of a pain to set it back in there. I'm just going to clean up some of the solder off the anchor points. Just so it'll sit. Okay. So you get your port. Just make sure it's going to fit in nice. And there's still. Sorry, I had to go get my flush cutters. My uh, port. So these Xbox One ports, they have these uh, these holes here. They're not solder points or anything. They just got these plastic legs that go through. Um, and the the one leg because it took the port off and I'm just putting the same one back on um, that plastic leg had burnt so it melted sorry it melted and uh, the port wouldn't sit flush so I'm gonna get a different angle here on the scope but we all can benefit and see better better from it Move that up scoot that down there we go and there we are looking at the port so see putting it at a weird angle like this is really hard to get into focus you just want to fit it, make sure everything's going to sit flush and well with it, and it looks like it's going to do do pretty good. So we're we're set there. Before we put the port on, though, um, you're going to do what is called tinning. Uh, the new ports obviously aren't going to look like this. Uh, this port has some flux and solder because 400 times. I'm just putting the old port back on, um, but the method's still the same. So your port has no flux no solder no nothing um, but mine does so what you can do I will just simulate this probably gonna be a little bit more of a chore for me because I've already got solder on it first things first flux and put a little solder on your iron and you're just gonna go through and coat each pin just like so rotate this a little bit because that one anchor leg is in my way okay once you get each pin nice and coated you feel free to clean off your iron if you got too much solder on there it's gonna be a pain in the neck okay so see how i still got that bridge i've done a couple passes but it's still not coming up so i'm gonna help out a little bit get a little flux my iron down in between the two pins and pull it up just like that just like so all right so now we're ready to come back to the board view here we'll get back into focus and there the port sits so you can go about one of a hundred ways um the old method i used to do let me see if this knife tip is still hot no okay so the old method i used to do i used to take a knife tip and just like this i would come in and i would heat up the pins or i would squish it push the pins down um oftentimes it would cause bridging uh or i would only get a connection because i'm heating it up just here i would only get a connection right at the edge of the pins um where's my tweezers and it wouldn't be a very strong connection. It was functional, but it wasn't strong. Um, so 
this method. Um, Northridge Fix posted a video on it. Uh, it's one that I always recommend to people, but even then, I guess people still struggled or didn't get enough out of it. So that's what my hope is with this video is that I can explain more to you the process and how to do everything. Um, so the method that we're going to do, um, we're going to heat up all the pads at once with our hot air station and kind of just flow um, the port into place. Um, so as it is heating up the board, you're going to put your port down and then just hold it into place while you're still heating it up, making sure everything's flowing. You're going to take the heat away. You're still going to hold on to the port um, until everything is cooled down enough to where you can let it go. And you solder the legs on. After you get this technique down, it takes me maybe 20 minutes in total from physically holding the Xbox completely assembled to disassembling, getting the port off, putting the new port on, putting the system back together and testing it. it takes me about 20 minutes now with this method. Uh, it's very quick, very efficient, works every time. I, I don't have issues. If I do have issues, it's because one of my pin or one of my pads didn't have enough solder on it and all I gotta do is just touch up with my iron. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, grab our station, 400 degrees again, 50% 50, uh, 50 airflow. We're gonna start heating up. <clears throat> and it'll definitely take a second. I'm not doing crazy, crazy high heat or airflow because these ports have like plastic housing um, that will definitely melt if you do too much um, heat with it so just gonna get a different grip on my air station here and we're just gonna keep heating it up heating 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 until we know our pads are melted which you can tell by their shine that they're melted. And if I take it away, it'll start to cool. It'll start getting dull. You can kind of see it now. Things start getting dull. Yep. See how they, see how they change like that? It's a subtle change, but it's a change. I'm going to come back. I'm just going to put more flux down because I took my heat away. I want that flux to dissipate. And I've got flux on my pins too. That helps out as well. So our pins are all hot. And good. We're gonna put the port down and make sure everything is straight. I'm just gonna keep at it with the heat. Keep at it with the heat, pushing down, make sure everything's flush. I'm gonna take the heat away. I can turn that off. I shouldn't need it anymore. All my pins are still straight. As you can see on the lower camera, my right hand is still holding the port down with the tweezers. These ports are actually pretty easy to use this method because you can hold them with the tweezers at the very tip. At the very top, there's a little lip for you to grab on. Um, so by now, everything should be cooled enough to where you can let it go. You can just slowly ease up on it. You give it a little wiggle just to see, and yeah, it looks good. So at this point, you can take your tweezers. Oh, see there's a pin there. Pin there. Okay. So far, not so good. As an example, none of my pins, oh, those, those are good. That one's not good, that one's not good. Okay, well, that's fine. What we can do, we can just come back. And it might just need a little help, a little bit more help here. I'm also not using super high airflow because the um, my hands are pretty close to this <laughs> so you definitely I can feel the heat but it's not too uncomfortable I'm just reflowing this a little bit I'm pushing down trying to do equal pressure for all the pins and I've got a good feeling that this is this is gonna be much better yeah, I think I think my first pass, I just didn't have enough pressure to hold everything down. So I can tell that everything's solidified. 
um, because you can see the color change in some of them, and that pin's not solid, but these so far are all solid. That one's not solid. Those two are not good. That one's not good. So instead of just reflowing again, oops, I'm just gonna come in with my iron now. Yeah, kinda help it. Just take a mental note as to which ones were not solid. Just come in with the iron and help roll them into place. Okay. Just like so. I'm getting shaky hand, so just pull away for a second, take a breather. And we're just going to come through, check them all again. I think we're coming up on the pins that we had missed, yes. And you're not doing insane amount of pressure here. That one's still... And that very last one, okay. Remember, it was the very last one. I'm trying to use my left hand here. Okay, good. And I think it was. Which one was it? So this one. Yeah, that one's kind of. Looks like it, it's. Got a connection, but it's not very secure. There, and that looks like it. That looks like it got it good there, so. Still moved a little bit. What I'm going to do, I've got a thinner gauged uh, solder here. I may need may need to toss a little flux down, clean it up. Probably what I'll do. Give it a good good little scrub. Be careful though, if you still have pins that aren't very secure and you're scrubbing like this, you're gonna wiggle them and destroy them. So give them just a slight Got it cleaned up. There's just some fuzz from my towel there. Let's go ahead and check every pin again. See that one kind of moves. It's it's secured back here, but up at the front, not so much. Same with that one, too. And that one. I'm trying to wipe some of that alcohol off. And I'm just going to flux down a little bit. Wait for the iron to catch up. There we go. 
Yeah, so that that got a good good solid uh just blow some of this flux. That's a good solid connection right there. There we go. All right. See, it's good. Um, we had some mistakes because it shows that even you can do it hundreds of times and it's not going to be flawless every time. And also, I can show you how to work out those mistakes. All right. Fuzz up, just get good thumbnail pictures here. <laughs> All right, I think we're pretty much pretty much solid here. That looks good. Other than some of the uh, lint from the. stuff there but I think we're good I think we're good um so before you finish though you're gonna have to flip the board over now that you know that your pins are all set I flip the board over we'll get into focus here a little bit have our iron a little bit of flux Come in and melt those legs there. I'm still using kind of a small tip. That knife tip, you would get a much, much cleaner joint. But this still, still looks pretty decent. I don't really care for changing my tips out all the time. I pretty this is pretty much the only tip that I use. <laughs> I make it work. Although I do have a decent variety of iron tips. Okay. So there's that. And of course, as with everything else, for alcohol, for brushing. Wiping, and you guys are solid. That's it right there. So I hope that this was informational, easy to follow. Like I said, this is my second um, pass through. Um, I guess actually, what I could do is help you with troubleshooting. So you can get a HDMI breakout board if you want, um, just to test continuity on pins and make sure everything is connected and solid. Um, another thing too that you can do is you can check continuity um, between the pins to make sure nothing bridged. Excuse me. So if you get a multimeter, I've got this one as you can see in the lower camera there. It's an Astro AI just off Amazon. It's like a fluke knockoff. Um, I can link it, I definitely will. Um, but you're gonna get your multimeter, set it in diode mode, continuity mode. Um, it's the one that makes a beeping noise. I don't know if you can hear that or not. You probably can. Um, and then I've actually I've got capacitor legs soldered to the probes, so I get thinner, um, thinner probes for jobs like this. And you can check the continuity between the pins and it'll beep if there's continuity 
So you hear the beeping there. That's because this pin here is a ground pin and this is also on the ground plane. Um, so you can hear, ah, if I can hold it steady. You can hear that beeping. That's because the, the basically the ground pin soldered to the ground plane, which is fine. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, but what it shouldn't do is beep if you've got your probes on the pins next to each other. They should not beep. And you'll occasionally, you know, touch your probes together. Don't freak out. Just try and hold it steady and find what it does. So you can see if those pins are connected to the proper lines by putting your probe up there and then following the gold trace down to the filter here. It should. Yep, it should beep just like that because you're, you're set. You're set. So you can check your continuity there for majority of these pins. Um, I believe every single one of them goes to um, a point on the board other than which is out of focus other than the ground pins which are you know here and here there 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 there, there. there's a few there's a few of them um, so that's how you can test and make sure that you don't have any bridges um, if this is your first few times doing it especially if it's your first time I definitely recommend making sure there's no bridges because if you bridge a few pins it can cause a lot of issues um, I've seen uh, pins not the pins back here but like the pins on the on the port on the inside of the port um, because they got busted or mashed um, it is blown filters um, or importantly the da, 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 if we can follow it oh we're not gonna follow it that way because that's that's what we're looking for. It can blow filters or it can blow this chip here, um, which is no fun to replace either. And that might be a, a future tutorial on that. Um, so anyways, uh, let me get back over here. Readjust my mic. That's out of the way. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys found the tutorial informational, helpful. I know it's a really long one. Um, I don't want to gloss over anything that you might have questions on so kind of just act like I'm holding your hand a little bit and uh, trying to explain it as thoroughly and as slowly and simply as possible because I know it's not an easy job not an easy job um, so hopefully you guys found it uh, beneficial uh, like I said I want to do more tutorials in the future uh, on, on different things diagnosing replacing uh, just how to's and stuff like that so uh, stick around for the future we'll definitely be getting some more tutorials in uh, but for now uh, I think we're all set so uh, we'll just see you guys in the next one appreciate it thank you